So now that we covered majority of the basics for the interface, let's start importing some footage so we can actually do some stuff. So there's multiple ways you can import footage. Uh, you can go to File, Import, File, select a file from here, or you can double click on an empty area in the project panel that'll open up the same window. Or you can just drag stuff into here. So I have a folder open. We can just drag it into the project panel over here and that'll import it for us right away. So in the project panel, you can do some organization to your files and whatnot. So we can like add folders, call this images, for example, we can drag that in there. And you can even rename the files you import. And this won't actually rename them on your system, but it'll rename them inside After Effects, which would be kind of handy. So now I'll just import another file. We'll import a video. So you see we have this media in our project panel, but we aren't actually seeing it in our viewport besides like this little preview in the project panel. So to actually start manipulating our media, we're gonna create what's called a composition. Or if you're coming from Vegas, this would be essentially your main project. Cause in Vegas, you just have one timeline per project and that's it. In After Effects, you'll later see we can have multiple projects essentially in the same project. And this might sound complicated at first, but you'll see it makes a lot of sense later. So there's multiple ways you can create a new composition. And for creating our first one, I'll first explain the long way and then I'll explain the short way. You can click on this big button in the middle, but you won't always see that. So we're gonna click on this button in the bottom left of the project panel called Create New Composition. And in here, this would be a lot like your project settings in Vegas, where you can set resolution, frame rate, and so on. So for this composition, I'll just make this 1280 by 720, so 720p. So 30 frames a second is fine. Duration 15 seconds is also fine as well. Hit OK. And if we want to import our footage into this, we can just go up to the project panel, drag in this video here, and there we go. We now have that video in this composition. Uh, one problem you'll notice right away is if we start scrubbing this, it's gonna be zoomed in a little too much. So we set up our composition settings wrong. So that brings me to the other way you can create a composition, which can be a lot easier. So we'll just undo all that. We're gonna take our video from the project panel and drag that onto the button for create composition. And so if we scrub now, and so you'll see it's created a composition of the same dimensions as the video file. If we check the composition settings, by coming up to the men this menu here, composition settings. You, you can see it's also set the frame rate of the composition to the video's frame rate, the duration to the video length duration. So it's conformed all the composition settings to our video file. And so this method will work with images and even audio too. So if I drag this image onto that button, it does the same thing. It creates a composition of the same dimensions as that image. One thing to note for images, if we go into the composition settings for this, it will use the same duration and frame rate of the last comp we created, which can be an issue sometimes. So just make sure you double check that before you do anything else with this composition. So we've covered a lot of this interface stuff and probably now you're just like, how do I preview my video? How do I start actually doing stuff to it? So we're gonna cover that now. So to preview your video, the simplest way is just by hitting the space bar. This one does, dummy. It's super powerful, older blocker body watch. So when you're previewing your video, you obviously don't always want the preview of the entire video. So you'll move your playhead to where you want to start the preview from and play it from there. But when you're previewing it, After Effects is going to attempt to cache every frame in the composition, assuming you don't change what's called the work area of it. So your work area is this little highlight area up here that we can change by dragging it from the left side and the right side. And that will set 
the region where you want to preview your video. I think in Vegas, this is a lot like that little blue bar you have at the top. This is essentially the same thing as that. So for example, if we set this to a really small region like here and we hit play, it'll loop just that one region of the composition. Uh, you can also set this region by using the B and N keys. It's usually the fastest way to do it. And you can even use this work area to set the length of your composition. So for example, if we just wanted the clip of him punching the dude, we can set our work area to just that part of the video. And then right click, trim comp to work area. Now set our composition to just that work area that we specified. But we'll just undo that for now. And if you're ever having issues previewing your video or it's like glitching out for some reason, usually it has something to do with the cache and how it's storing the frames in memory. So easiest way to resolve that is just by clearing that cache. So to do that, we would just go to edit, purge, and then click on all memory. And sometimes in some extreme cases, you'll have to purge all memory and your disk cache. So in the future, you probably will be using these two options a lot. And not just because After Effects can sometimes be wonky and not behave correctly, but for example, you're working on a composition it eats up a lot of your RAM and then you're done with that composition and you're gonna move on to another one. You don't need all that information laying around in RAM. So you can just clear the memory for that, move on to your next composition and it should run a lot more smoothly from there. All right, so a couple more things to note before we go on to actually manipulating our footage. So in our timeline for our video layer, you'll see we have all these switches and options for it. And if yours doesn't look exactly like mine does right now, like it may look like this, double check in the bottom left if you have these first two options enabled. And then that should show all the buttons like mine does. So the first one is the toggle, the visibility of the layer. Second one is the toggle audio. So if we mute it, no audio is going to play when we preview it. Uh, this one is to solo the layer. So if we have multiple layers, we can solo it and that will just display that one layer or preview just that audio depending on the type of layer it is. Uh, locking the layer will allow us to not select the layer in the viewport, can't select it in the timeline. And if we unlock it, then we can select it again. Uh, over here is your layer name, which if we want the rename, we can just hit the enter key type in our new name for it. So next to the layer name, we have all these switches, like a switch for frame blending, motion blur, adjustment layer, 3D layer, which I won't go into detail now, but as we move on, I'll start to explain how you can use these. Next to that, we have our blending mode. And this all also explain what we can use this for in the future. But for comparison in Vegas, right now it's set the normal. In Vegas, this would be your, what they call source alpha. And a lot of these are the same in Vegas, but there are a few minor differences that I'll bring up later. And you also have an option for a track mat and then what the layer's parent is, which again, I'll explain later. And that essentially covers all the major basics of the interface. So in the next tutorial, I'll be explaining some of the basic manipulations on footage we can do. And then from there, we'll be adding effects to it and so on.